So coming now to Hanzi okay. and, and the sort of normative metamodernism, the idea of metamodernism as a political project, mm -hmm. where are you on that? Where am I on that? Yeah. What do you think? Um, well, I'm kind of uncomfortable with it. Um, because it's the difference is not just descriptive versus normative. Um, what the content of what they are kind of advocating for is not the same content as what we're describing when the people kind of in, in my world use the term metamodernism. So it becomes really confusing. Um, um, so, I mean, and, 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 you know, at the risk of reducing a lot out of, but I think that kind of the main areas that are the, the, what they're mainly prescribing is that, um, people, uh, our political systems, our educational systems and everything mm -hmm. should take very seriously this stage yeah. developmental stage theory. Yeah, particularly Michael Collins, yeah. Um, or, yeah, or um, Ken Wilber. Well, yeah, although they're... Is I mean, that all kind of the same thing? Well, um, there's a whole conversation there. I mean, yeah. uh, but okay, run with it for now. Um, but okay, this, yeah. deve So developmental stage theory is quite important to them. That's true. Um, and... Um, and why is that not metamodern? Why is that antithetical in some sense? Um, I wouldn't even say it's antithetical. It's just orthogonal. Orthogonal, right. Okay. okay. Um, it's just not, it's not the point. Right. Okay. So whatever yeah. it is, so the way they would see it, I, you know, why, so why, so you're sort of saying, I suppose your question to them would be, look, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying yeah. what you're saying isn't relevant. It may or may not be, that's fine thing, but it's open to you to tell me why what you're doing is in some meaningful sense, metamodern. Yeah, why is the word metamodern applied or used as the name? Right. So for it? They, I think they would say that it's it's an attempt to give back some kind of norm. To, to actually, they would probably say, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing here, but uh, they would say, well, we care about interiority too. Mm -hmm. They actually, we believe they have a language of um, depth and a language of like, internal depth being very important to them cultural code being the kind of way in which your interiority is influenced by the cultural space. They do speak of um, uh, stages, um, mm -hmm. but uh, they are aware that that's only one way of understanding how a person develops. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think they speak about state as well, about your sort of capacity for transcendent experiences and the extent to which you're, you're, you're high or low. Um, and that would also be interiority. So there, I think their counter would be, look, we're metamodern because we really believe in the interior life of human beings. And we believe the proactive cultivation of it is the quintessential aim of this historical moment. And we think that's metamodern because like you, we want to guard that space that's been attacked mm -hmm. by modernism and postmodernism. Okay. That's what they'd say. Okay. Um, should I say what I would say? Sure, sure, of course. And let rip, you know, don't hold back. Yeah. Um, but I think that was a really effective kind of summation of what, what they might say. Um, so a few things, um, which one? Um, but what kind of I end up seeing empirically is um, when, I haven't heard Emil speak much. When I've heard people speak in interviews, it's usually Daniel. So when I've heard Daniel speak on podcasts and such, and he gets asked, like, what would be, and usually the person asking him, their whole idea of metamodernism simply comes from the Hansi Freinex thing. And the people will say, what would be, is there any such thing as metamodern art? Um, and he doesn't name any of the stuff, the, the, the tons of stuff that's been around, he, he, he'll, he'll speculate and say, well, what it would be, or 
maybe you know he'll he'll cherry pick and find like one possible example of some kind of existing cultural so, so is, your, is your contention not, not that you would needlessly personalize it but just your contention is that from the basis of what you've heard they're they don't seem to be well versed in the actual existence of cultural artifacts that are metamodern in nature right but i'm not assuming it's because they're unaware of them right. i'm i'm assuming that when they see them they don't occur to them as metamodern i see i see i see so for them i think if you might we spoke about fleabag for them i think what's ex what animates them is a sense of a political project that reclaims some normativity and direction Mm -hmm. They see a world kind of hollowed out, a lot of mental illness, ecological collapse, mm -hmm. um, a kind of failure of governance on an epic scale, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, a, and an inability to really attend to our inner experience adequately. And rather than the society being all about external growth and mm -hmm. uh, a kind of ex the exterior of progress, they, they believe in the interior progress. They believe okay. that one can grow in a certain sense and be be well they, they may not say happier but they would probably say that people can cultivate their inner lives to have rich to have a higher state experiences so they have more transcendence and less like depression and anxiety mm -hmm. and they can have a, a more advanced cultural code so they can live in uh, complex multicultural societies that are technologically advanced and, and function well within them mm -hmm. we would say that um, to try and uh, remember how they put it but they would they would want people to grow in mental complexity mostly because they think that to adapt and survive in the world um, you just need that grasp of how things connect mm -hmm. more in terms of different aspects of the exterior world so the economy influencing society influencing politics on the one hand but also the economy influencing mental states influencing relationships influencing mm -hmm. education and so forth um, now, the, the question then would be, that's fine, and it's all very interesting, but in what way is it metamodern? And I think they would say it's metamodern because it's a, it's a concerted attempt to reclaim a normative vision grounded in interiority, precisely the kind of thing that you're trying to protect. Um, okay. Um, I don't know if this is a fair move for me to make, but... As I said, and by the way, I'm, I'm not particularly, I'm speaking on their behalf because I know their books reasonably well. Yeah. Not because I particularly share or, you know, their, their outlook necessarily. No, I know, but they're not here. And, sure, 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 sure. and you're representing them and I appreciate it. To you at least, yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, um, so let's see, what was I going to say? Um, I, like I said, I don't know if it's fair for me to now do this. But um, the interiority part, you know, there's a lot of people who theorize metamodernism and they, their theory gets them describing the exact same artifacts that I do, but they don't even mention interiority. I see. They, they build it simply on the oscillation between modernist right. and postmodernist. So my question is, Although there is something kind of oscillating between modernism and postmodernism in the fictional character, in the playful way they use the fictional character of Hanzi, right. but the actual content that they're promoting, I don't really see where that is an oscillation. Right. Okay, so, so I think they would say, and uh, my reading of them is that look, it's modernist because it's about a kind of progress. It's about mm -hmm vision and direction and driving with a kind of rational sense of how the world should be and how we can build it together. In that sense, it's modernist. It's postmodernist in the sense that it's leaving no one behind. It's, it's a kind of welfare uh, declaration of the welfare of everyone um, and, a, and a strategy to achieve it, grounded mm -hmm. in a richer understanding of who human beings are. Mm -hmm. uh, how, you know, I think the four levels, they have depth Cold stage, stages and states. And so they're interested in cultivating all those things. And they even have a vision of governance that tries to cultivate them. Mm -hmm. the, reason it's met, the reason they would say it's metamodern is the oscillation is, and yes, we are 
utopian enough to believe that we can try and build a better world. Um, but we're also conscious of the absurdity of that and the utopian nature of that being therefore unlikely to be achieved. Mm -hmm. so they oscillate in the sense that they're aware of the absurdity of that. And that's why they even take on this, uh, this character of Hanzi who is psychoactive in the way he writes because he's trying to sort of wake you up to the fact that if you're not going to do this, what are you going to do? You know, where, where is your vision of normative progress? Mm. Um, the oscillation, I agree, is not yet that clear. You know, it's, it's, th there is an inclusivity, there is a perspective, and, and one of their main underlying theoretical models is the model of hierarchical complexity by Michael Commons. And that is very much about the capacity to integrate quantities of information and, 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 and different kinds of perspectives when one, one thinks. And I think their view is that um, that's quite, that might, they might see that as a kind of metamodern, uh, sorry, a postmodern okay. because, it, because it's inherently perspectival. Right. Um, so it's something like that, I think they would say. Um, but um, I agree with you, they may not be grounded in the cultural understanding of metamodernism as a sensibility. Yeah. Um, their sensibility, I agree with you. Well, yeah, the, the, I'm not sure. I think there might be a bit more overlap than you imagine. Um, no, there may. Yeah. Um, and I want there to be, you know, everything would be easier if, if it was convincing to me that there was and that it was, you know, but um, the other thing I was going to say was, um, shoot. Um, oh, so this is kind of just a pragmatic question, but um, although, you know, sometimes they take the effort to call what they do political metamodernism, not right. just metamodernism, and others have sort of on their behalf called it um, developmental metamodernism or prescriptive, any, all these things. But the actual real world result is the people who come to the word metamodernism through them give them ownership of what it yeah, yeah. means. No, no, that, that's true. But that, I think that might be a function of the, the ingenious and somewhat audacious creation of this uh, fictional character, uh, mm -hmm. Hansi Um And look, I've read both books and, and they're full of red pen, you know, I have all sorts of queries for them and things that don't add up. But I think they've done well to articulate a kind of proto movement that people who are bereft of political vision at the moment mm -hmm. can identify with. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, I'm not against sort of like the purpose of their project. But, but just to say, I, I am with you on, in, in one sense, certainly, which is that they do write as if metamodernism is a sort of beyond and better than and, and mm -hmm. in some sense superior to what has gone before. Right. Um, they, they speak about pomos in derogatory terms, for right. example, to mean postmodernists. Um, they also speak about the originators of the term metamodernism in derogatory terms. Right. I don't know about that, but yeah, quite, quite possibly. And um, no, so there's, it's highly problematic. And um, I don't know how much overlap there is, nor how much I should really be bothered by it. But I mean, I can hear you that if you care about the notion of metamodernism as a distinct, sophisticated sensibility mm -hmm. that arises from a, a deep discernment of cultural artifacts, of various kinds, then I can see why someone coming along claiming the mantle of that term for a questionable right. political venture, right? Like they're doing something out of place. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. And um, the other thing I was going to say is, like, let's just for the purpose of this conversation suppose that you know if if we looked at what they were doing, if we hadn't come across what they were doing, and it wasn't called metamodernism, it was. Well, something you think else. Metamodern. That's interesting. Um, let's say I would think of it as metamodern. Right. And I'm not saying I do, but right. okay. let's say that many people, you know, would and would agree. Yeah. But what we would do, and then, but it would have it, let's, it should have a name. It should have its own name, whether that was Hanseism or listeningism or, 
you know, whatever it was. And then we might say, oh, look, here's another example right. of metamodernism. These right. people have built this incredibly sophisticated, complex right. system. So and, it's an illustration and, of the cultural pattern that's already there rather than the actual phenomenon. Yes. But yeah. No, I think that's right. And I think most people I know in my network share that view. Okay. That, that, that um, there's a sense in which they've, they've whether willingly, whether knowingly or not, it sometimes looks as though they've subsumed the concept mm -hmm. for their own purposes. Um, but that's partly because of the verb, verb with which they <laughs> took it on. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I have mixed feelings. In some, in some sense, I admire them for that. In another sense, I think it is a bit inappropriate. Not least because I think that there's a depth and sophistication to the kind of work that you presented about metamodern culture in its modern forms of, by modern I mean here. Contemporary. <laughs> contemporary forms, yeah. Um, Fleabag we've mentioned, but many others where you can see this beauty in no longer being naive, you know, having gone through the modernist project, having been cultured in postmodernism, and yet now trying to reclaim the dignity of being human with, a, with, with our own soul, so to speak. Um, and, you know, with open questions about the meaning and purpose of existence being valid, I'll yeah. be no longer approached naively. Yeah. And there's dignity in that, which, which, which is threatened by a kind of quasi-cultish movement yeah. uh, that gets behind two young guys who think they can change the world. So, um, yeah, I see the tensions um, uh, in it.